Welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we're going to be talking about testing your gear. Been out here scouting, enjoying it. It is summertime and uh, we got a perfect day to be out here. But it made me think of the fact that now is the time to be testing your stuff. So if you bought new rain gear, now is a good time. We got a break in. It's been raining all day. Everything is soaking wet. Get out in there and wear your rain gear. Test your boots like this. You just bought new boots for this hunting season? Get them out there. What you're going to find is that your boots are going to have a certain amount of time before water pushes into them when you walk through this stuff. I don't care how good they are. Keen are the best ones I found. I, I haven't tried them all. You know, I haven't tried like Krispies or anything like that, but Gore-Tex fails all the time. I can't stand Gore-Tex. Um, learned that firsthand many years ago. Haven't tried it in about 10 years, but 10 years ago, Gore-Tex sucked. It was horrible. I don't like it, but Keen Dry does fantastic. I can actually walk right through the middle of this stuff right here, and I can probably go for about an hour and a half to two hours before I can actually start pushing water into my boots, which is pretty impressive. Can't get that kind of quality out of a lot of them. Waterproofing, like stepping in a puddle for a minute, is one thing. Waterproofing with rain coming down is another. Waterproofing in a boot where you're going to push through these, and as you walk, you're going to be grabbing all of this stuff. And that, when you do, and you wrap that around your foot, and push through that it pushes water in and to be waterproof enough to do that and be able to tolerate that for a long time is hard it's important you know what that is if you have a stand it's going to take you 45 minutes to walk and bust your way through this stuff to get into there and you're going to head in there yet your boots are only going to keep you dry for the first 15 minutes of that walk you got a problem you're going to need to wear rubber boots or something different this is how you learn that stuff you get out and you test it you need to know that. You need to know if your your water if your rain gear will be waterproof. If you take your rain gear and I come into here and I walk through and I got all this stuff happening, I'm twisting up on all this and I'm pulling through and doing all of this, everything that you're gonna hit on the way out there and wreck it and doing that stuff, if it's going to push water through as you're moving things like that and you're gonna end up wet then you need to know that. This stuff here, completely dry. I've been out here for most of the day, and even after doing that, zero water anywhere, because it works. Not a lot of rain gear can do that. I promise you, there is not a lot of uh, rain gear that will just do what I did by wrapping all that around and wrenching it. It will push water through the material. So knowing what you can and can't do, what your gear is capable of, the only way to know that is to take it out and test it. Now, if your rain gear can't do that, and you can't do that and push water through it and get all that stuff to go through uh, or if it does that's okay just know the limitations so then you know instead of walking through there you stay somewhere else you know that if your boots can only take 20 minutes of walking through this stuff you're gonna have to stop and take longer or be very careful and start pushing stuff over as you walk rather than pushing through it like that where it's gonna get water inside there so knowing your equipment is important. Knowing the limitations of your equipment is important. The only way to figure that out is to come out and test it. Test it and figure it out ahead of time and just take notes on that, understand it. You don't have to do that with every piece of equipment, but rain gear like I'm wearing right now, pretty important to know what the capabilities and limitations of that rain gear is. So far, First Light, Kuyu, um, that kind of st the stuff that I have, the Kuyu Chew Catch and the First Light uh, Vapor Storm Tight and Boundary Storm Tight Pants, very few limitations. They are straight up incredible. They are well worth their money. I'm not gonna lie if this stuff, I, I, you know, I got these, this set for a smoking deal, but this is my third set of the Boundary Storm type pants. The other ones I paid the full $230 price for. These ones I got on sale as a matching set. You know me, I don't wear camo. Um, but, uh, but I bought this set cause I got it for like, I got it for 200 bucks for the whole entire set versus the 500 it normally cost. Now, with that said, after owning these, this uh, couple sets of this rain gear, would I pay $1,000 for exactly what I'm wearing right now for this pant and jacket? All day long. I do it all day long in a heartbeat. It's that good. Um, and so is the Kuyu. So is a lot of them. I'll bet the Stone Glacier stuff is. Doesn't matter. I bet all this stuff is really good, but it's worth it. Same with my boots. You know, I wear Keen boots because of the fact that they're comfortable, they're durable, they last long, and they're, com you know, they, they keep me comfortable and warm, but they also, they have Keen dry waterproofing in them one of the best i have found in a hiking boot period and they last they just don't break down like the gore-tex does and wear out and they hold up really well to this kind of stuff how do i know because i'm out here doing it okay i don't just i'm, I'm not a keyboard hero 
that's going to sit there and say, oh, I bought these, look at, like, oh, I don't go, oh, God, look at my new knife, this thing's amazing, it's the best knife I've ever had, and I'm looking at it going, you don't even have a mark on the blade. It still looks like the factory edge, you've never actually even used it. I'm not that guy. I'm out here doing this stuff and using it constantly, and that's how I base these decisions. And I'm telling you to be that guy. Get out there, test this stuff, try it, make sure you, you know, and again, don't get disappointed if it doesn't do something you expected it to do, because this is the real world here, you know, we can't, you, you're not going to buy, you're not going to get this quality of rain gear for a hundred dollars. It's not going to happen. You know, you're, it's not going to happen at all. But knowing that, knowing the limitations of what you have, make it where it still becomes functional for you. Like I said, if you know your rain gear on your shoulders without wearing a hat like this one, but if you're just up here and you got your, oh, I hope there's not water in here. I had it tipped in. Hang on. Oh, we're all right. But uh, so if you, let's say you're, I'm just using the edge anyway, but so you're wrapped up in your hood here, all tucked in like this, and you know that those shoulders and the top of that hood, let's say that it takes, uh, it takes 35, 40 minutes of a good rain, and then you start to soak through and that water permeates, and you start getting wet there, and you start getting wet on your shoulders with your rain gear, that's okay. A lot of rain gear is going to be that way, especially when you buy it cheap, knowing that you know how to handle that and what you can and can't do and you know what the limitations of it are. If you're going to be out there raining and you know it's going to stop within an hour of you being out there and clear up, you know you're fine. Or if you know there's just a chance of rain, you know you're fine. But if you know it's going to be a torrential downpour day and you're going to be on stand for five hours, don't wear that rain gear. Find another solution, okay? It's important to understand it. If your rain gear does not breathe and you're going to get all clammy and hot and that kind of stuff and you have a a uh, mile and a half walk into your stand, you're going to have to weigh those options of knowing that you're going to be sweaty, smelly, and clammy and soaked from that. Is it possibly better to wear just the pants, leave the jacket off, pick your route accordingly and carefully, and then put your rain jacket on when you get there? Would it be smart to just go in it walk through there in your boots and uh, in your boxers and or even a pair of, like a pair of nylon jogging shorts, your boots? and um, put gaiters on and then have a uh, t-shirt and then when you get there take that soaking wet shorts shirt and uh, take those off and put them in a ziploc bag and then leave them there and then put on your hunting clothes with your rain gear you have and, and there's nothing wrong with that i've had to do that with my heli hansen stuff years ago a couple of times on really hot days when i'm hunting if it's a long way in it's like all right i'm either going to get soaked by being in the rain gear walking there or i'm going to be soaked by the rain if I get soaked by the rain, I don't smell, and then when I do dry out, my rain gear is still probably pretty decent. Sweaty, uh, soaking, getting soaking wet from perspiration inside of rubber rain gear, that smell that your body will create is just very strong smell. It's way different than getting wet from the rain. I would much rather be soaking wet from being out in the rain and then dry out and then put on rain gear to protect me for the rest of it and keep that warmth in then get soaking wet from being wet and clammy from sweat on the inside. Because again, that smell, that whole thing, it's a horrible experience to deal with. And then like I said, when you're hunting that, that's a pretty powerful odor out there because it's 100% sweat combined inside of a rubber suit. It's pretty brutal. So, and you don't know that unless you come out and you test this stuff. So come out and test this stuff, test your gear. That's the best advice I got for you. Doesn't matter what it is. Why I don't wear a lot of high-end hunting clothes and my regular hunting clothes stuff. I do have some, First Light and uh, uh, Kuyu and uh, uh, Sitka, and, and I love it. I wear it for special occasions, but 90% of the time when I'm hunting, I am actually hunting in regular, just, you know, like I'm wearing right now. They're just, you know, khaki or green cargo pants that I buy from Walmart. I like the one from Walmart, but that's what I'm usually wearing, and then I'm usually just wearing a regular shirt any, any t-shirt, long sleeve flannel shirt, and then a Kuyu vest. I like the Kuyu vest because it is kind of waterproof. It's kind of form-fitting and keeps loose stuff out of the way and tucks it in nice and tight. I like the vest. But other than that, um, everything is just normal everyday clothes. Why? Because I know what they're capable of. I wear them every day. There is no surprises. I know that, okay, well, if it's going to be 50 degrees out, then I'm going to be fine in just a pair of khaki cargo pants, and I'm going to be comfortable and in this shirt. Why? Because I'm out there in 50-degree weather every day in those clothes. I see it. I, I, I feel it every single day. So I know how they work because they're being constantly tested on a daily basis. I know that in cotton cargo pants, if I lean down on the ground and I put my knee on the wet ground, I'm going to have a soaking wet knee. 
I know that if I then continue walking, it's going to take about an hour and that knee is going to be completely dry. I also know that if I do that in my, um, in my call or whatever you call them or whatever they are, a, pair, a couple pairs of pants that I got that I wear in the summertime uh, that are more like a, a nylon, I know when I do that there, I get wet quick, but they're drying about probably about 10 or 15 minutes. So knowing the, the limitations of and, and capabilities of your clothes, the only way to do it is to test them. Test them, test them, test them. Get outside, use it to your advantage, figure out what this stuff is so that you don't start heading out to a stand in a certain type of a day, rainy day element, whatever it is, and by the time you get there, you're cold, soaked, clammy, miserable, and your hunt's over. Instead, understand how your equipment works. Best tip I got for you. With every piece of it you have, for whatever situation, test it, know it, realize it. Same with the cold weather stuff. Same with the hot weather stuff. Same with everything like that. So uh, that's, that's my best advice for you on there is to uh, figure out what it is that works and how you like it and why you like it. This hat. I love this hat. People laugh at me for this hat. In deer camps, they laugh at me. It keeps me dry, tremendously dry. I don't need to use a hood. I can shoot with this hat and it usually just folds out of the way. Or if I don't want to deal with all that when we get these gaps, I can just pop that up because it holds the Velcro and I can still shoot and do everything, but it keeps me dry. I love this hat. You know what else it does? It allows me to wear bug spray when it's raining. Okay, if you don't have this and you're just running the hood and you got this hood up, water is still going to be hitting your face. All of your bug spray washes away completely. This hat allows me to wear bug spray and not have any rain take that bug spray off my face. It works incredible. So test your gear. Can't say it any better. Thanks for watching. And maybe I'll put a link down below for a few of these items here for you. Uh, some of that kind of stuff. But make sure you test, test, test on your gear. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.